Hello, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the News with Fei. I'm Fei. Biden's first major foreign policy speech noted China and Russia. He said, "American leadership must meet this new moment of advancing authoritarianism, including the growing ambitions of China and the determination of Russia to damage democracy." While he said his administration would push back on human rights issues in China, he also added that the U.S. is ready to work with Beijing if it's in America's interest to do so. How? I reckon they may have to play by the CCP rules. China's top diplomat Yang Jiechi warned the Biden administration not to cross Beijing's red line in a virtual event on February 1st. He told the Biden administration the U.S. should stop interference in the affairs of Hong Kong, Tibet, and Xinjiang. These are China's internal affairs. In regards to Taiwan, the U.S. should strictly abide by the One China principle. Yang's speech could be regarded as a soft approach, which is one of the two tactics, hard and soft, to pressure the administration. Recent incursion into Taiwan's airspace was hawkish tactics. Ultimately, Yang's talk revealed a signal that the China's regime wants to revert back to a time when human rights and commerce were decoupled from each other, so they could continue to do business with the U.S. while ignoring human rights issues. The former Trump administration confronted China on human rights violations against Hong Kongers, Tibetans, Falun Gong adherents, etc. Will the Biden administration work with China just like the way they want? We'll see. At the moment, we do see lots of early signs, which is not hopeful. Some time ago, Biden's space advisers urged him to cooperate with the CCP in space exploration. The reason provided was that the normalization of space relations with the CCP will reduce their hostility to the United States. How do you feel about his approach? Do you think that cooperating with the CCP will reduce their hostility? Leave me a message below. I think that's impossible. Historically, the American policy of appeasement has nourished the CCP step by step. Today, there are many battles coming in the United States without involving gun power. The CCP spies are everywhere. They have sneaked into the American companies, universities, and various organizations. There are more and more cases of theft of top secrets in scientific research institutions. Last year, the FBI director Christopher Wray stated in a speech that half of the 5,000 espionage cases investigated by the FBI were related to the CCP. For every 10 hours, a new CCP spy-related case would be launched. I will just give two examples. Yesterday, former University of Florida associate professor Dr. Lin Yang was accused of defrauding the federal government of 1.1 million dollars. He joined China's Southern Talent Program without disclosing this with his university and the federal government. Even NASA, one of the largest federal agencies in the United States, can't escape CCP's infiltration too. A few weeks ago, it was revealed that a senior scientist of NASA was involved in the CCP's Southern Talents program. During his tenure at NASA, the scientist violated the regulations and participated in the Southern Talents program. He was employed by a Chinese university, and he did not report it. For those who don't know, the Thousand Talents Program is China's talent project that aims to take the intellectual properties from the West, especially the U.S., and transfer these technologies to China. Now, if Biden followed the advice of this space consultant and cooperated with the CCP in space exploration and research, it would be equivalent to taking American money and resources to share it with CCP. Well, in this case, it will make it easier for the CCP. They don't have to steal the technology anymore. With a bit of bribery, the CCP will soon own NASA before you know it. Needless to say, if Biden is cooperating with CCP in the space exploration arena, it would put the United States space dominance in danger.、Hmm. I wonder what is the real intention of these space consultants for Biden. What do you think?
For the past 60 years, space has always been the battlefield between the most powerful nations in the world. Whether it was the US and the Soviet Union during the Cold War, or the US with CCP now, it is always an important battlefield. Why is that, you may ask? Because space-related technology in itself is very advanced and extremely expensive. An average country could not have the financial means or the technology to develop in space. Thus, space is the perfect place to showcase a country's technological strength. Furthermore, from a military perspective, space is an excellent defense and attack position. Anyone who has watched war movies know that high land is always easy to defend and difficult to attack. Then, is there any position higher than space itself? Isn't a missile drop from the sky would be hardest to defend? For this reason, CCP has always tried to compete with the US in space. Currently, CCP's main weapon of attack towards the US in space arena are anti-satellite weapons, laser beam weapons, and hacking. Today, we just focus on anti-satellite weaponry. For the past 20 years, the CCP had always kept a close eye on the United States military development. Like the Afghanistan war in 01 and the Iraq war in 03, the tactics used by the US military had opened up the CCP's horizons. One thing that caught their attention was the US military's use of satellite-guided bombs and cruise missiles. Thousands of them, like downpour onto the Taliban Caliphate and the Iraqi forces. However, unlike the US just used these missiles to bombard these places, these missiles were guided using satellites and were able to accurately attack the enemy's vital positions. The CCP immediately realized that if the United States went to war with them, these satellites would be their ace card. Therefore, since 05, the CCP has begun to develop anti-satellite weapons. In 07, the CCP's successful anti-satellite missile test finally raised the alarm for the Western world. Although the test only destroyed one of the China's retired weather satellites, it was the first of such tests since the Cold War. After that, the CCP conducted more than a dozen anti-satellite missile tests and continuously raised the heights of the target. Therefore, theoretically, the CCP has the ability to attack any US satellites. Especially for the Biden administration, dealing with the regime needs extreme caution. Some of his executive orders already met with criticism with a large number of reports on threat to the United States national security. Let's take one as an example to see how these policies will endanger the US. This executive order revoked Trump administration actions restricting the use of Chinese-made bulk power equipment in America's electrical power grid. Why does this suspension have a significant impact on U.S. society? Last year, the Wall Street Journal reported that the United States confiscated some Chinese-made transformers because they found that these transformers had backdoor software that could be used for remote monitoring and control, including remote disablement. Familiar, right? Chinese hardware with a backdoor for remote control. If such a device is used in the wide range, once it is remotely controlled, it can cause large-scale power paralysis at the very least. And Biden's suspension undoubtedly provides the other side with a backdoor to attack the US power supply. I can't help but ask, why did Biden leave the backdoor opportunities for the CCP? Why would he allow the possibility of another country in control of the US power grid? He didn't give any explanation. U.S. cyber warfare expert Price said Washington's inaction and weakness may provoke increasingly aggressive cyber attacks to the U.S. He mentioned an electromagnetic pulse weapon. The Washington Observer reported a new piece of information. Russia has developed a super electromagnetic pulse weapon and a warhead, which can reach a speed of Mach 20, 20 times the speed of sound that can destroy the U.S. power grid without attracting attention and letting America plunge into darkness. 
A common understanding in the military field is that for hypersonic weapons with a speed exceeding Mark V that is already very fast and have very high military value, and if the speed reached Mark 20, take for example, if launched from Moscow, it hits Washington within 10 minutes. The electromagnetic pulse attack is different from traditional warfare. It explodes in the upper atmosphere and can destroy the power grid and computers in a larger area. The power supply may be interrupted for more than a year. Most importantly, Price said that the CCP has also surpassed the United States in this electromagnetic pulse warfare. Does that sound worrisome to you? Very much to me at least. Many commentators have accused the Biden administration of being doing the tough talk on China but not really doing anything in action. We'll see how things go in the future. All right. That's all for today's program. If you liked the video, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching Beyond the News with Faye and Faye. I'll see you very soon next time.